Hey guys, it's story time today and I have lots to share. If you guys haven't known, I am a huge, huge fan of Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli is a Japanese film animation studio which is helmed under the great director Hayao Miyazaki and he has produced amazing shows such as Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, Kiki's Delivery Service, The Wind Rises and so many more. If you guys haven't watched any of his shows, stop everything you're doing now and watch them. Now that you guys have watched them, Great, let's begin. Most of Studio Ghibli movie soundtracks are composed by this one person called Joe Hisaishi and he makes the most brilliant music ever. His songs are so dreamy they transport you to a fantasy realm you never knew. Now, when I heard that Joe Hisaishi was coming to Melbourne to perform most of his enchanting works, I hardly could contain my joy and I was so happy Joe Hisaishi would perform with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and it would be on selected key dates. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Golden ticket level. He really tours out of Japan, so if he does, it's really something. So if you guys want to know how he performs, you can actually check out his performance at Budokan Japan. It is his most extravagant performance to date. On the day itself, when the tickets were on sale, I was so, so ready to buy it. When I went online to buy it, it sold out. One second, it went live. One second. That was crazy. Like, I didn't even stood a chance. I felt so despaired. Like, my dreams just shattered. I couldn't buy any ticket at all. And absentmindedly, I just signed up for the waiting list. Because that's what you do when you can't get tickets. You just put your name there in case something happens. So that's what I did. And I just left it there left to forget about it. Two months later, I received this email in my inbox and it was news sent from heaven. It says that Joe Hisashi will be adding two more dates to his Melbourne tour and those who are on the waiting list, such as me, would get the privilege of buying tickets first before anyone else. I was so happy guys, like it really gave me hope and on the day itself, I was again waiting really impatiently for it to go live and long story short, Here's the ticket. My dreams have come true. And I'm finally here at the Hemel Hall Art Centre, just a few meters away from me, and I am so excited. The day has finally come for me to watch the Studio Ghibli Orchestra, and the weather is so beautiful, I can hardly contain my excitement. And look, I think I see Kiki flying over there. Do you see her? So the art centre was really packed and even though there were shows that were on the same day, I knew that everyone was going for the Studio Ghibli shows. Like there was even someone wearing a Totoro onesie and yeah, I, I can see their enthusiasm as well. So upon entering the hall, you can see blue and green lights on the top and it gives this mystical feel. I sat at the very top and here is my view, which is the balcony seating. And you can actually see straight away that the stage is not that big compared to what Joe Hisaishi would normally play at. This is considered nothing. So here is a set list of the songs he played if you want to check it out yourself. And I can say that this is actually the same set list he performs around the world. He has not changed his set list for 10 years and it makes me happy that I didn't miss anything out. It is the intermission now and I can say, oh my goodness, the first act was so amazing, so dreamy and so magical. By the time act 1 started, my hair on my skin was standing, the music was spine tingling guys. All of his instruments came together so well. The horn, the flutes, the trumpets, the harp, the piano, everything. Joe Hisashi himself was a very calm man. He didn't even say a single word to the audience, he didn't even speak at all. He bowed numerous times and when he was conducting, Man, you can see his authority. This is a man with 35 years of experience. The show was joined by two singers, one from the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and one from Japan, which added a nice vocal touch to some of his songs, such as My Neighbor Totoro, Princess Mononoke's theme song, and also for Ponyo. The one that made me almost cry was the song Heartbroken Kiki by the show Kiki's Delivery Service. And in this scene, Kiki was really depressed because she couldn't fly and her broom broke. So that really touched my heart. On the left and right on the stage top, there were a choir and they sang really beautifully, especially amazing in the Nausicaa Requiem. It has a sinister vibe to it, which, which I really like. Yeah, I'm not sure if other people like it, but I like it. So the songs themselves sound extremely good, like how you would hear on the CD, exactly note for note. Especially for the song The Dove and the Boy, there was only trumpets for that segment. It was amazing. 
And here is a video of Joe Hisashi himself towards a standing ovation. Fun fact time! You guys must be wondering how much were the tickets, were they expensive or were they not? So this one I got which was the concession price of $70. I think there were about a few categories and the most expensive one was $150 and that's for a full price adult. And interestingly, I went online to see on Gumtree if anyone was reselling the tickets out of curiosity. I saw someone was selling two of these tickets for a whopping $750. That's like five times more expensive than a regular ticket. So yeah, I wonder who would that crazy person be to buy that ticket. Another thing is I'm heavily influenced by Joe Hisashi's music. I even have his piano sheet music book which I bought a few years ago. And upon looking his songs, I can actually sense a little bit of his style. And that is what also inspired me for my songs in my Emotions and Ethereal album. I grew up watching student Ghibli movies, you know, my first one being Spirited Away and um, House Whipping Castle and so forth. And the music was the one thing that caught my attention the most. Of course, the visuals were great too, but the music the most. So I consider Joe Hisashi a living legend. And all in all, this opportunity to watch Joe Hisashi live in Melbourne is one thing I will never forget. It is extremely amazing experience. And if you guys have the chance to watch If He Ever Does Come To Your Country, do not give up. Just go and grab the opportunity. And even if you go on the waiting list, you never know, you might get opportunity too. So yes, that is my fairytale experience that I wanted to share with you guys. Dreams really do come true. And this is where I will end the vlog. Thank you guys for watching and do subscribe to my channel Casual where I make weekly vlogs every Friday. And I'll see you guys next time.